Hello! Let's talk about debugging redstone contraptions. Have you ever ended up staring at a redstone contraption and there are just way too many signals going on at the same time and you can't really figure out what's going on and what is affecting what? Literally the first mod I have ever installed in Minecraft was the carpet mod because I was looking for redstone debugger. I needed something that at least would allow me to single step. And uh, the carpet mod allows us to slow down time so we can see signals and uh, it allows us to single step so we can take note what's going on in the every single tick of the game basically. But sometimes you just have too many signals and they are really, really, really hard to track. And sometimes other debugging methods could be better. Maybe not necessarily replace single stepping, but sometimes you could use some other tools. And uh, yeah, th this is not the contraption that is particularly hard to understand, at least not for me, but it's for a demonstration in a second. I have also attempted other methods at debugging things. Right here in my Let's Play Survival World, I have actually built the ultimate debugging machine. And uh, it's right here. It's this thing. Yep. It's a giant rubber duck. And the idea is that you explain your problem to the rubber duck and uh, well, then you finally understand what your problem actually was. I'm not kidding. This is actually a real debugging technique used in real life. Uh, look it up. The, it's on Wikipedia, so it must be true. Anyway, we're not going to be building the ultimate debugging machine uh, because, well, it has already been built. Today, we're going to be doing the second or maybe the third best thing after single stepping and explaining your problem to a rubber duck. We're gonna be building an oscilloscope. Yep, a redstone oscilloscope. And uh, here it is, but uh, it, it's not on. Let, 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 let's turn it on. And uh, yeah, it's, it doesn't really look big enough. So, uh, no, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, like that. That's big enough. Now we can see what's going on. <laughs> So yeah, this thing behind me is a Scarpet script, which is an oscilloscope for redstone signals. And uh, yeah, it does what it says on the tin. It's an oscilloscope. Uh, so basically, this thing is running a script that every tick is probing a few signals in, in this just simple, stupid contraption that I have made just so we could get pretty lines here. Does it really like it's a fader here, a, a, a comparator fader here and uh, a torch that is clocking the whole thing. It's it's not complicated at all, but it gives us pretty lines that we can look at and talk about. So what's going on here? On the y-axis is the signal strength level, and on the x-axis uh, we have recordings of what signal level all the three different signals here have had, and we record for 200 ticks. The script will be, of course, available through my GitHub and uh, there will be a link in the description. And uh, I'm already going to say right now, it's not fully developed yet. And I'm very much welcoming contributions. If people would like to have an oscilloscope in for the redstone contraption, come to my Discord. Let's talk about it. Let's develop some more. Um, it has some of the features I already want, actually most of them, but I'm sure other people will have other requirements. So, what are we measuring here? We are measuring this torch, and you can see that there are lines coming from these labels here. There is a line going straight into the middle of this block, which means that we are actually measuring this block. I can remove this block, and now it should... it doesn't break. That's interesting. I haven't actually tested this. Uh, so apparently the power level of a block in Minecraft is doesn't require an actual block. We learned that now. Uh, the interesting thing was that when I was actually measuring the block where the torch is, uh, we're getting the signal level that this thing is. I, I have no idea why it works like that. Please do not ask me because this these are weird Minecraft internals. To measure a torch, you have to measure a block above it or in front of it or maybe a bit of dust here. Uh, let's see what happens if we measure this dust. So I can do scope, probe, and uh, we call it torch dust. No spaces in the names unless you have double quotes around them. Bam, now we have another measuring point. Ah, 
And unfortunately, uh, this is a bug. Well, it's not a bug, but it's 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 kind of a weird design issue that I still haven't solved. Uh, the graphs are changing colors when you add a, a new graph sometimes because I'm using using a hash map for storing the probes that we are probing uh, right here. So they change colors. So we have the torch dust, which goes here, and it is that. Uh, strange whatever color this is which is different from this but not much different unfortunately the color palettes i have chosen are not perfect yeah and the torch dust actually follows the torch it's barely visible so unfortunately uh, there aren't perfect methods for drawing things with with the scarpet language uh, they're relatively simple i'm just drawing lines here so as you can see the torch and the torch dust are overlapping each other Anyway, if you're measuring two signals that are always identical, maybe you don't need to measure both of them. Uh, let's see how we set this up. First, I'm going to reload the script uh, that is running this so that we can start from scratch. This clears everything usually. There we go. Now it's completely clear. Uh, but by the way, these knobs and, and, and this, this lever, they do actually work, but they are definitely not necessary if you want to set this up for your own use. They are just show for this video because it was funny I thought. Anyway, uh, so now we have loaded the script completely fresh. Uh, I'm gonna aim at this block and I'm gonna do scope, pause, which is position, and bam. This draws our grid uh, and as you can see we are actually drawing the lines. If It's barely visible here but we are drawing the lines slightly in front of the blocks here. The blocks here, by the way, are completely unnecessary. I only have them so that they provide better contrast for, for, for showing the oscilloscope, but they don't need to be there at all. Right now, the only orientation that you can get for the oscilloscope is, if we look here, to the west is the front of the oscilloscope. That's the only orientation I'm allowing right now uh, because I just haven't written the code for it. And if someone thinks it's super important, I welcome in contributions or, or let me know and I'll probably do it one day because it's no big deal to, to change it, but I just haven't done it yet. Anyway, now we have set up the grid. So this will be our rendering area here. And uh, let's just set up some probes. So we're going to be probing this dust first. Just type scope probe, tab complete to get the coordinates for the dust, and we need to give it a name, so we're just going to call it fader1. Because it's the first comparator fader. And now it got set up, and you, as you can see, we started measuring the signal level here, and we're recording it on the scope here. Let's do the same thing with the dust of the torch rather than the torch. We do scope, probe, tab complete, and torch. Um, now we're measuring the torch and now we're seeing the pulse and you can see what delay there is between this signal going high and uh, the torch going high. But we can look at it in more detail in a second. And let's just look at this fader because it has slightly different behavior than the other fader. So scope, probe, this and call it fader 2. Bam. And now we're recording everything. Now this, this is already slightly useful, but it might be hard to keep up with the display. So one way you can uh, maybe get a little better view on this is if you do scope, toggle, scroll. And now we're not scrolling the, the display anymore. Instead, we are just cycling through the buffer and redrawing new signals as they come in. It should be relatively easy to see where we're drawing the, the new values. So now you can maybe get a better look like this, but this is of course not all. And this is probably one of the worst methods of, of looking at things. So let's start scrolling again because I, I think it's actually better. Another decent method of recording what's going on is you do scope and single. Now it just performs a single recording of the buffer, which is 200 ticks. So 10 seconds, it records 10 seconds of uh, what your machine is doing and now it stops and it's frozen and now you can look in more detail at what was going on at various points in time. But this might not be the best solution either because uh, you might actually want to start recording your machine at some very specific point in time. So let's reset this so we can get the scrolling running again. 
And let's say that my machine does a cycle of work or does something when the torch goes high. So I want to start recording when the torch goes high. And for that, we can do scope trigger torch. And as soon as the torch signal went high, we started recording a single sweep. And now we have the result here and we can look at it a little bit more closely. Of course, uh, it doesn't, it might be a little bit hard to see exactly what's going on because the, the grid lines on the Y axis, they give us the power level correctly. But on the X axis, well, we get a line every 10 ticks and that might not be ideal. So you want, if you want a little bit closer look at what's going on, you can do scope V grid, and then after how many ticks we should have a vertical grid line. And now we're having a grid line every tick and, and this is now becoming a little bit painful to, 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 to see. So you can maybe by the more effects behind me, you can see why I don't have this as the default option because this is kind of crazy to look at. But if you want to look at exact details, you will get one line every tick you were recording something. Let's put it back to something more reasonable. We can put it to four. And it looks like that. Or maybe, let's go back to the default 10. This makes the most sense, even though it might not actually be the best for measuring things. Uh, it gives you the best overview. Now, another reason why you might not want to have the grid lines that close to each other is because this is might actually be sucking a little bit of, of performance. So that we can see what this does to performance, just, just displaying this stuff. Let's enable the possibility of using this lever to turn rendering on and off. And for that, I actually have a secret command, scope, deprobe, and the coordinates of the block that this lever is powering. The lever is on. Now we can turn off the rendering. So we can see up in the left corner, I'm getting about 900 FPS by default. This is with Sodium and Iris mods. Uh, so the performance is, is pretty decent. It's jumping up and down when I'm opening the F3 menu, but that, that usually happens. But uh, just watch what happens when I turn this on. Yeah, it's tanks. I can't do anything about this, I don't think. I think I'm doing it as efficiently as possible. It is just that the Scarpet mod sending rendering information uh, to the rest of the client is kind of expensive. Unfortunately, I don't think I can do anything about it. If you know Scarpet programming, uh, have a look at the script. Tell me if I'm doing anything wrong. Like I, I read the documentation about how to do this yesterday. So I might be doing something really, really stupid. But I think uh, I'm not doing anything extraordinarily stupid. It, it is just supposed to be unfortunately this slow. When it comes to performance on the server, if we just turn the rendering off, but that shouldn't matter. Uh, you can see I'm running at about... Oh. Does rendering actually affect the MSPT? Well, it does. <laughs> we learned something new today. Apparently it does. I thought it didn't. I thought that the, just collecting the data for the buffers, because even if I turn off the rendering, uh, th this thing, actually, no, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. This thing is not collecting data. So let's, let's reset. Now it's collecting data correctly. So yeah, we are running at around six MSPT right now when we are collecting data. If I turn off rendering, we're still collecting data in the background. Oh, okay, it dropped actually quite significantly. It dropped a lot, to be honest. And... Uh, If we just turn off the scope completely, uh, that actually doesn't affect anything. So, uh, I learned something new while we're recording this video. Apparently, collecting the data doesn't take any performance whatsoever, but rendering absolutely kills it. Uh, that's, that's what we know. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this relatively short showcase. There will be a link in the description uh, to the GitHub repository where you can find it. I will roll a new release so you can get the release from a zip file, but otherwise you can just copy paste things for, from, from GitHub. It's not, not particularly a big script. 
Let me know if you have any ideas how we can extend it. Show up on Discord if you want to discuss things and maybe contribute to, to developing this. I'm not exactly sure what other features I want to add. There are a few polishing touches that I still want to add. But in general, this should be usable right now, just as it is. Thanks a lot for watching, and have a good redstone debugging. Bye.